want to talk to you guys about spatial disorientation. I don't know if you guys have ever heard my lecture on lessons from the Titanic, right? Like the shipwreck, the Titanic. Uh, I use it as a sort of example about how new technology can lull you into a sense of complacency and that it's our job as CFIs to look for the proverbial icebergs, right? We have to look for what is it about this new technology that could potentially cause problems that we didn't um, anticipate or that we that didn't exist before the technology, right? So if, if you're not familiar with what spatial disorientation is, it's, you know, when you're flying without visual reference at night or in the clouds and you lose sort of your perception of which way is up, which way is down, um, it's a terribly scary feeling and you really, the only way out of it is to trust your flight instruments. If you consider that, you know, what create what causes spatial disorientation in part is the fluid in your inner ear and that 90 degree head down motion is exactly how you would initiate a spatial disorientation experience. One of the things that I see from the right seat so often now during instrument training are pilots with their iPads on their legs, right, down here locked into a kneeboard, which has the pilots doing this in flight, right, constantly doing that, that 90 degree down head motion. Um, from the right seat, it looks like this, right, so obvious from the right seat. If you just take like a quick search of Google looking for spatial disorientation accidents, there are a lot. Starting with Kobe Bryant and just going on and on and on throughout history. This is definitely a thing that kills pilots and not just new pilots, this kills experienced pilots as well. Um, in this video we're going to talk about three thoughts, we're going to give you three thoughts on how to avoid or deal with spatial disorientation. Um, I mean the first thing is you have to believe that your attitude indicator is like a hole that has been drilled through the front of your airplane. Uh, you are going to look at that no matter what shape it is, a small six pack or you know a large rectangle, that is the horizon. And you have to focus on that and believe it. The next thing is try to fly with gentle inputs, right? If you're not, if, if you haven't practiced flying around in trim with just using your feet or just a couple finger, fingers on the yoke, um, you really should. It'll contribute to, to good airmanship all the way up and down the scale, but certainly when it comes to instrument flying, you should make gentle turns, level off in gentle ways, initiate climbs in gentle ways. And lastly, if you have to look around the cockpit, try not to use rapid head movements. Try to just use you know, little eye movements if you have to. And definitely avoid this thing that's like 90 degrees head down. I see people with their iPads on their laps all the time now, just 90 degree heads down, 90 degree head down. Um, in fact, the FAA has a simulator they take around to air shows they call the gyro. If you ever have a chance to go in it, go in it. Uh, but they'll get you flying on a simulator and at some point they'll tell you to drop your pencil, put your head down 90 degrees, and it just feels like you're tumbling backwards. I mean, the feeling is so disorienting that it's hard to appreciate uh, until you've experienced it. So, you know, what can we do about this? Well, first of all, in the old days, we would have paper charts, which are super light, and we would hold them up. Right, so that you just pull them up off the thing. You don't have to do that. You just kind of pull them up. So, like, what if you could get your iPad just straight off your leg like that? What if you could just pull it up and put it back down? What if you could pull it up and put it up here when you needed it? Right. So, what I want to tell you is there is a solution like that. I found it, and until I found this solution, I did not even lock my iPad down at all. I would just hold my iPad up like this all the time. Uh, but since I found this solution, I'm using it, and I think it's pretty fantastic. It's a universal mounting system, but sometimes I can have it on the yoke. Um, sometimes I can have it on my knee. Sometimes I can just pull it up and hold it in front of the flight instruments, like uh, like you should if you're flying an instrument approach and trying to like maintain ATP tolerances or even just stay on course. Um, so I don't have to do that 90 degree head down, and what I'm trying to avoid as I fly around with an iPad now is this. So if I need to look at my iPad, I just hold eye contact and I can just pull it straight out. It's a simple device, a universal mount, so you can have mounts all over the cockpit. You can put it on the yoke when you need it, on your leg when you need it. Uh, don't cover the Lindbergh reference. You can put it over here when you need it. Um, just an awesome solution. So there's a link in the description if you want to check it out. Um, definitely try to figure out a solution though that has you avoid that 90 degree head down moment because I am telling you from sitting in the right seat that that is an iceberg you need to look out for. All right, aviators, these videos are listener supported. So to help keep them ad free, consider becoming a patron.
Also, thanks to our sponsors. To learn more about winning an airplane, yes, you heard me right, winning an airplane, visit aopa.org sweeps.